Welcome to the Dental Compare Buyer's Guide on Cone Beam Digital Imaging. Now, the problem with two-dimensional imaging in, in a lot of cases is that it is, presents a distorted view, depending on, for example, panoramic x-ray. If the patient was in one particular position in the focal trough, it will distort the final image, so you won't get accurate measurements. Well, the neatest thing about Cone Beam is you get an undistorted one-to-one -one view of, of whatever you're trying to shoot. So how do these things work? Essentially, they work very similar to the way a panoramic machine works. You have x-rays coming out of one side and you have a detector plate on the other. Well, in this case though, the x-rays are actually emitted in, in the shape of a cone. That goes through the head and then the, as it spins around, the computer assembles all those different densities and it uses complex algorithms to essentially recreate a three-dimensional model of whatever was in the middle. Now, what are you gonna use this machine for? A lot of times people think that cone beam is really great for implants, but not much else. Well, it absolutely is great for an implant. I wouldn't place one without it. What you find is that there are certain structures or shape to the jaw or position of the sinus or other teeth that just simply aren't detected in a distorted two-dimensional image, so it becomes absolutely important. Plus, you can use these cone beam images to create surgical guides, so you can do all your surgical planning beforehand and then know exactly where you're gonna place the implant makes the surgery more efficient, more predictable, and more accurate, and very safe for the patient. But that's not where it stops. You can use it for periodiagnosis, endodiagnosis. There's, we've all had those cases where they come in, the patient's in pain, you just can't see anything. Nowadays, we could take a cone beam and see so much more. The idea is that if you can't see it, you can't diagnose it. And cone beam strips away all the periphery and lets you focus in on one area for the best diagnosis dentistry has. For example, if you're an orthodontist out there and there's an impacted canine case, you don't know exactly where that case is. Cone beam is gonna let you visualize exactly where that tooth is in the palate before you even get started, so you know exactly where to go with the case. Now, what are some things you need to know before buying one of these machines? Well, what kind of office are you? The, the main thing to be aware of is field of view. Do you need to get something that captures the whole head or just a small part of it? If you're placing multiple implants, maybe you need something more. If you're a neural surgeon, definitely you need that full view. If you're an endodontist, maybe you can get away with just zooming in on the one particular tooth you're looking for. So definitely be aware of field of view. Part of the reason that is also important is because it changes the amount of radiation the patient is exposed to. Another thing to be aware of is what tools the software has in it. For example, if you are implant treatment planning, does it have those tools already integrated to the software or is that going to be an additional cost? Another thing to think about is the size of the unit. Some of these things are pretty big. So does your office have a space where you can accommodate that? And that might change the type of one that you get. Keep in mind, there's, there's different types of uh, systems that the patient gets into. So there's laying down, that takes up a lot more space. There's sitting and also standing type of scanners. So that's gonna definitely affect what you bring into your office. Now, if you'd like more information, check out the Dental Compare Buyer's Guide on Cone Beam Imaging.